I recently posted a video talking about how the um, social media, on, on social media, you're only kind of shown things that you engage with and how you um, come to believe things that are just repeated over and over again. And there's so many examples of that in medicine where there are certain things that people believe in medicine because they're just told that and it's passed on and on and there's actually not a lot of truth to it. Um, I'll never forget, I had a mentor in my residency who's like, always look everything up. Don't just believe what you're taught at face value. And that was very valuable because there are certain things that just get repeated over and over again. And if you actually delve into the literature, there's not anything to substantiate these things. For example, I was taught, and hopefully they're not still teaching this, but there is a hair condition called central centrifugal cicatricial alopecia. It's very common in uh, black women, and it is a very uncomfortable, and it leads to, it's a type of scarring hair loss. And, you know, for a while it was believed that that was caused by certain uh, chemical hair treatments like relaxers and things like that and that was just the default this is why this happens um, that's what that's what we were taught and I remember early on having patience with that and being like so have you ever used any kind of chemical relaxers or anything and they would tell me no and I would just feel like I had no nothing to offer them when they said that like you know, they'd be like, why am I getting this? Why am I getting this? And all I was ever taught was this is caused by, you know, some people have a, possibly have a predisposition to it. And then if they do one of these caustic um, hair relaxers, that it could trigger it later on in life. And I'll, I even had like attendants tell me, well, they, you know, maybe the maybe they just don't remember that they had that done. I was like, no, I'm pretty sure women remember having their hair permed or relaxed or whatever. It was just this time where I remember being like, this is not, this is not the answer. Um, fast forward to now, thank goodness um, people have done more and advanced the science more and have learned that certain genes that people have, genetic, there's a certain you know, genetic component to it, and it has nothing to do with the relaxer thing. Of course, relaxers and that kind of chemical processing are a no-go if you do have that condition and can definitely aggravate any kind of hair, hair loss issue. But I just remember being taught that, and that was an example of where I really, it was repeated over and over again, lectures, anytime they would show like, you know, present patients at we have these things in medicine called grand rounds where you present like a difficult case. And I remember just like any time that that would come up, the old school docs would just be like, well, does the patient have a history of, you know, using chemical relaxers or whatever? It was just repeated over and over again that that is what it was, but it's not. So you always have to push for evidence for things. Same thing with the biotin, you guys. I I believed that biotin supplements would be helpful for hair. And I was taught that. I was taught when patients have thinning hair or they're overcoming telogen effluvium, that shedding, hair shedding issue, 
um, you know, rule out other causes. And if it is that, then, you know, you can recommend biotin, just recommend biotin, just recommend biotin. Like it doesn't hurt whatever, you know, like, and it's helpful for hair growth or whatever, but there was really not any data to substantiate making that recommendation, but it was just repeated over and over and over again, biotin, um, biotin, and even the biotin for brittle nails. There is some, there are a few, um, small studies on biotin for brittle nails, but even that is pretty weak data. And it was just, I was taught that, recommend biotin, recommend biotin. But when I actually dive into the literature and you're like, there's not really any indication for making this recommendation. And then fast forward to now, and we have since learned that biotin supplements can interfere with the accuracy of certain tests. So yeah, things get repeated. <clears throat> and drive driven into you and training in you know people especially when people are in a position of who are teaching you or a position of authority over you you're very fearful and hesitant to question because you look up to them and you know depending on where you're at you may be in an environment where there is a culture of kind of top down um, I know this isn't unique to medicine, like in the corporate world, people deal with us and you just, you know, you don't question authority and medicine is very much like that all across all specialties. And so I think that that it presents a challenge. It really takes a, somebody in training, for example, takes a lot of courage to speak up and question things, especially in these like didactic sessions where you have all these like senior people who are really far into their career and you know they're your teachers and to question what they say it can be very not just intimidating but it can be kind of scary because it's not received well people don't like having their beliefs challenged and I'm telling you guys this because you will encounter this, whatever it is that you're doing in life, you are going to encounter this. And it's something that happens in the medical field all the time. People afraid to question and to speak up um, and ask for, ask for proof um, or, or speak up when things don't seem right. And yeah, I thought I would share that with you guys. Anyways, I'm here at Sprouts. They play music in there, which is cool, um, but I don't know if I'll be able to film, so we'll see. Wow, they have quite the selection of rhythm superfoods, veggie chips. I wanna try the pickled beets. Ooh, Brad's veggie keto crisp. Those look good. Yeah, powered crackers. Is it just me? I feel like kale chips, I know you can make them yourself, but I feel like the store-bought ones are somehow better. Just powdered coconut water. I'm not really into coconut water. I don't know what it is about it. I love anything coconut except coconut water. I mean, I'll drink it, but it's not like my jam. All right, a little mini Sprouts haul. One thing I love, Sprouts has a lot of like the drink sticks that you can get individual just to try them out. I love these Ultima electrolyte drink mixes and I saw they had a watermelon flavor which I have not tried so I look forward to giving that a whirl. I'll probably have that tonight um, after my treadmill run. I also got some of the Good Karma flax milk. I've really been loving flax milk lately and it's been on Ibotta. It still is. I think it's like a dollar rebate. Speaking of Ibotta, Cameron's is on Ibotta plus Sprouts had a coupon and it was on sale. And I have been loving this Highlander Grog rum and butterscotch. So I got another bag of that. Plus I thought I would try the toasted Southern pecan. They also have a deal on the pods, but I don't, I don't have a, I don't have an apparatus to do pods. Uh, I got some of these micro greens, micro cilantro. I never have, I've never seen this before. I've seen micro greens like broccoli sprouts, but not cilantro, so yeah, look forward to trying that. I got these Who Get Back to Human Grain Free Crackers pizza flavor. I've gotten these on iHerb before, but they are currently on Ibotta, 
and I think Sprouts had a rebate. Uh, Sprouts had a coupon for these too. Also on Ibotta, still these flow boxed waters. Um, I don't typically buy water, but I've rather been enjoying the flavor infused ones. And this liter is convenient to have on the treadmill after a run. So I got those, they're still on Ibotta, so I'm taking advantage of the rebate. Another Ibotta, I'm really getting, a, I'm gonna get a big rebate today. Anyways, I got um, this. I've had Hope Hummus in the past and I really like it. Wanted to try the black garlic flavor. Um, I don't think I've ever had that before. And it's been a long time since I've had hummus. This is a good brand. And uh, Sprouts had a coupon for it and it's also on Ibotta, like I said. Got some iceberg and last time I went to Sprouts, I got these Persian cucumbers and I practically inhaled the whole bag. They are really good. And then I got the Coco Yo that I went in there for. I also got the vanilla flavor. And this is just sweetened with stevia. So I look forward to that. You know, each of these little jars, they're not cheap. They're pretty expensive actually. It says there are two servings, but I end up getting like three servings out of it because I just put it like on top of fresh berry, uh, frozen blueberries or my slow cooker applesauce. And I actually end up getting like three servings out of it. Um, so if that's kind of been putting you off, like putting down that much change for two servings of yogurt, I think you can get, you can definitely get more, more out of the little jar than you might think. And because I got the hummus and the uh, cucumbers, I thought I would get some pita bread. And I've had these before from Joseph's. They're pretty good. So got those. And yeah, that's everything I got from Sprouts. But my gosh, I spent way too much time in there. There's so much fun stuff to look at in there that I kind of go in there and like peruse like it's a museum. Does anyone else do that? Just like go to the grocery store and wander around to look at what's new? That place is, is definitely entertaining because they have a lot of fun snacks and things. All right, I just scanned all of my offers from my receipt and uploaded it. Here we go. Woohoo, $6.50. <laughs> so yesterday I swung by my P.O. box and somebody sent me these cute Totoro socks. I love these. I've had these before and they're really good and I was needing a new pair, so thank you. They also sent me a cute little Totoro cloth mask. Isn't he sweet? And then I just love this postcard somebody sent me from Florida. Isn't that festive? So thank you guys. Ah, Runzo done. Fan is judging in the background. Update on the watermelon um, Ultima stick. Really good. Sometimes the Ultima sticks are a little like dilute. Well, I mean, I put it in a liter of water, so there you have it. But the flavor isn't super strong. But this watermelon one seems really strong definitely recommend that. Um, speaking of things that people just repeat over and over again and begin to believe they are true despite the fact that they're not, you do not actually need to drink eight glasses of water a day. That was something that was always said over and over and over again. People have kind of stopped saying it but they still believe that like drinking a ton of water is the uh, secret to to all of life's problems. Just drink more water. And I mean, it's really not. <laughs> um, it does help things for sure, but you know, you can um, you can get a lot of your fluids from food, and other types of fluid will increase your total body water just the same as drinking a bunch of water. That being said, I definitely feel better when I drink water. Um, but like. Another one people just repeat over and over again and for which there's no truth is that caffeine is dehydrating and that, like drinking coffee dehydrates you But it actually doesn't I mean, it's mostly water and the caffeine in it is Quickly, you know processed by your body. It's minimal it has minimal effects on your total body water content the caffeine component. So Yeah, it definitely does not dehydrate you um, that being said, if you are dehydrated, like you haven't been taking in food or water, you could tell in your skin because if you pinch your skin, especially up here, it'll tent, um, and meaning it'll stay, stay tented up from where you pinched it for a few seconds before relaxing back down. So that is, that is a skin sign of dehydration. But yeah, just people will say like, oh, drink more water, it'll clear your acne. It will not clear your acne, <laughs> um, but uh, 
yeah, you should drink water. I mean, it's, you know, good for you, a good thing to drink. You need to take in fluids, obviously, but you can drink way too much water, actually, and go into hyponatremia. Um, so that's why it's good to get some electrolytes in, especially if you run long distances. Speaking of distances, I ran with my watch on, but I've had my watch on all day, so I don't know how many miles I ran versus just walked around today, but it says I did 27,349 steps. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do my stretchy stretch though. I'm too lazy to get on my yoga mat. I've been stretching with these bands that I got on iHerb a while ago, and they kind of help as opposed to just holding my leg to help with the stretching. I remember back in the day when I was doing ballet, that was a rhyme, I used to get the um, inner tubing of a bicycle tire and stretch like this. I was a lot more flexible back then, a lot more flexible, but hey. If I had kept up with the stretching like I used to stretch back then, I think I would still be that flexible. I retained oh, some of it, but definitely not what it used to be. Because running really tightens the hamstrings a lot. And I've been lazy for the past few years when it comes to stretching them out. But it's getting a little better, the tightness. Plus, you know, adulthood can make you stiff. All right, I'm gonna charge my watch. I'll show you guys how I do that. Charging station here on the floor. This is pretty handy. I have been charging it. It's a Bluetooth face mask that I got a while ago on um, Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive, a sleep mask, and it syncs with your phone. You can listen to music. Um, the music comes through here. I like it, but for some reason it like makes my head overheat. I can only wear it for like an, a little while, like a 30 minutes. And once I start getting sleepy, I take it off and I put on a different sleep mask that is silk and feels a lot cooler. It's kind of strange. So I don't know that I would necessarily recommend it, but it works well for listening to music anyways. So that is charged. These are my camera batteries, but for my watch, Give it a charge here, I'll show you guys. You just pop the strap off. And see there's a little USB thing. You just pop it on in and it charges. So yeah, once I get out of the shower, I'll put it back on. But I have to say, it holds a charge for a pretty long time, like several days, actually. So you don't have to charge it that often. Um, but yeah, anyways, guys, I'm going to hop in the shower. So I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me today. I hope you had a fantastic Sunday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.